Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Lightroom tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Today we're going to talk about the freaky, crazy power of the facial recognition features in Adobe Lightroom. I think you're going to enjoy it, especially if you're like a crazy neat freak and all into organizing your photos and all that crazy stuff. If you enjoy this video, please make sure you hit the little thumbs up button to give it a like. That way YouTube knows to share it around so everybody can see it and hit the subscribe button so you never miss another Lightroom tutorial or Photoshop tutorial or photography tutorial or any tutorial that comes out on this channel in the future. And also, if you feel so inclined to support the channel, you want to see more stuff like this, go ahead and pick up my course. It's a course, a Photoshop course, not Lightroom, but Photoshop, but it is all about how to retouch photos in Photoshop. I think you'll really enjoy it and it supports what we do here at Tutvid. Without further ado, let's jump into this video and check out this facial recognition stuff here in Photoshop. Now, I have a little collection of photos that I've set aside here. I'm not selecting my entire library and I'm going to go ahead and hit this little icon here. This is going to take me into people mode. And if you've never gone into people mode before, you're going to see something like this. And you can, uh, you know, Lightroom's basically going to say the important thing. Look, you can turn face detection on or off at any time because it can be a little heavy. It tends to bog the system down a little bit. You know what I mean? Uh, we can start finding faces in the entire catalog or only find faces as needed. I'm going to say, look, hey, only find faces as needed. And it's going to come up here and it's saying, look, I'm a face detection. Uh, and you can pause it anytime you want here as well. So... It is paused. If I shut off the pausing, what it's going to do is it's going to really look through all of uh, everything in my library. And you can see it's just going through what I have here, these 74 photos. And it's saying, look, I found down here 29 faces. And it's stacking them all according to, you know, what it thinks are separate people. And I can see, you know, my, my little girl here. I've got a bunch of different options of her. So fa uh, Facebook. So Lightroom has not entirely uh, been able to detect that all these are the same little child. But we can fix that. And that's part of the coolness of this feature. Uh, we're going to give it a second here to just finish up what it's doing and then we'll uh, we'll finish the organization process. So here we go. We've got a bunch of different faces. It's done its thing and some of these faces are the same person and some of these are multiple faces in group photos that Lightroom has picked out. So let's begin here by selecting this first one and this is little Olivia. So I'm going to just call that Olivia and I can hit the enter key and boom. What's happened now is she has moved and this is her as well, but she has moved from the unnamed people section, this whole bit down here, up here to the named people. But not only that, over here in my keywords, if I hit this little black arrow, I have some sort of special keywords and one of them is called people and under people, there you go. Olivia is now automatically a keyword, but more specifically a people keyword. So if I'm looking and I have a bunch of different people who have gone through Lightroom and tagged a bunch of people, keeping track of a bunch of family photos, you want all photos of that crazy Uncle Cletus. Well, you've got, you know, Uncle Cleet or whatever as one of your people tags. There he is. And you've got all 600 photos of him doing all the crazy stuff that only an Uncle Cleet would do. Now, once we have uh, Olivia set as her own little person there, I can just select this group of her Hold down my commander control key and select that group of her and I can select name and I can just start typing Olivia and Lightroom says, hey, you mean Olivia? And I can enter a return. Yep, that's what I mean. And then just commit that. And you can see it takes all those photos, both those groups, because I commander control click to select both groups and it added them both to her. So I have these 30 photos of her now and Lightroom knows, all right, those are all Olivia. Now here we have Matt. So I'm just going to say Matt and go ahead and enter a return. You can see a separate named person is up there for Matt. Over here in my keyword list under people, I now have Matt as a keyword. Five photos of Matt. Problem is here, two more photos of Matt, right? I can click this little icon, by the way, this little stacked icon at the top corner, and that's going to open up that little, uh, that, that sort of folder of photos. So there's two photos of Matt. I can say, well, I could, I could type his name in, or I can just drag these and drop them on the Matt group, and boom, that's added to Matt. Lightroom knows that those are Matt. Now, right here, I've got Jamie. So I'm going to say Jamie. Voila. We've got 16 of Jamie, but also we have Jamie and Jamie here. Whoop, let's select Jamie. Hold on, Commander Control. Select Jamie. Drag these up to Jamie. All right, and you can see here, Jamie, Matt, Olivia. Now we have multiples. Up, oh, we have more Olivia here. So let's drag her up. And this here, this is Natalie. So let's say Natalie. And now Natalie is going to become her own person up there. And we also have Natalie here. And we hold on, Commander Control, because that's also Natalie. And I know that that is also Natalie. And I can drag her up. And now Natalie is all in her own group there. And you can see Natalie is now a name. Great. Uh, now here, this this one, this is Isabel. So let's go Isabel. 
and then she's going to become her own person. We have five photos of her. I don't think there are any others of her. So you can see here, you can very quickly begin going through and adding and all of these different people where you can very easily keep track of them and you can search through keywords and say, hey, I need photos of Olivia. So let's just go back to grid view here. No, oh, I accidentally started typing here and her name is Amanda. So let's go Amanda. I'm just going to add Amanda as another person. I'm going to click away so I don't type anything. I'm going to hit the letter G to go back to grid view. And you can see we got these little tag icons. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, let's just go select Olivia here. And you can see all those photos of her get highlighted, right? But I'm going to deselect out here and we're, we're sort of out of people view, but let's go to one of these group photos. Uh, I'm going to just come down here and hit the loop view uh, icon and it's going to bring us to this view. And we can see here this this girl here. This is Amanda. We named her, but we didn't name any of the bridesmaids. Right. And I actually don't remember the bride's names, uh, the bridesmaids names offhand. But just for the sake of the argument here, uh, we could take this icon right here and you can see it says, look, Amanda and six unnamed unnamed people are in this photo. We could take this and we could say, yeah, over here, this is. This is Tina, and uh, maybe this is Ashley, right? Uh, and so on and so forth. Well, let's let's edit her name. We can just click on it and say Ashley, but but without the capital S. There we go, and it's going to give me the capital S. So we want to come over here and double click on the tag and rename the tag here, Ashley, with the lowercase s. There we go, and you can go into any photo, and maybe there's a face hidden back there in the bushes, and I need to draw my own box, and I can say you know creepy bush guy or something, and creepy bush guy is going to show up as a keyword list. Um, and if I want to get rid of it, there's a little X icon. Boom, get rid of it. It's gone. So you can go into any group photo and see here it didn't detect her face on the edge. So with this tool, I can draw over her face and make sure that we're selecting her face as well. And in her case, I can name her whatever, you know, model left side or something. That really wouldn't be too descriptive because there can presumably would be a lot of models on the left side. Uh, but whatever her name was, let's just say it was Jasmine. Uh, if I can spell it right, Jasmine, uh, without the capital, I don't know what is the capital letters today. Let's just say it's Jasmine. There you go. Boom. You added it. It's that quick. It's that easy. Super, super fast to do. Now, of course, once you've created this sort of library of faces and you've gone through and tagged all your family members or whoever, what good is it all if you can't use these keywords to segment out, for instance, that crazy uncle Cletus because you're doing, you know, whatever, a, a birthday party or something for him and he needs a slideshow. I don't know. How do we do that? Well, what we can do is simply over here, see this little arrow? Just click on that arrow, and what's going to happen is just photos with the keyword Olivia associated with them are going to show up here. You can cycle through them, and if we go back to the grid view, we'll see here what's happened is Lightroom's created a custom filter where only – uh, the keyword Olivia is being shown and we can even segment beyond that. Look, I only want that day that I rented that 5D Mark II or I only want that day I rented the 5D SR or the Nikon D810 or the, the, only the wide angle shots or whatever it is. You can you can filter based upon all sorts of things. And by the way, not just lens, but you know, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, all kinds of different things you can filter based upon up here in the library filter beginning with just the shots of her. So that's pretty stinking cool. I should also mention, if we go back to the people view, when we have this segmented out, so just the tag of Olivia is shown, obviously we only see named people. Let's jump back over to the grid view and shut off our filter. So I just hit this little custom button and just choose filters off. I'm going to jump back into my facial recognition collection here that I set up for this tutorial. Let's jump back into face detection mode here. And if we, let's say we want to get to one of those bridesmaid shots here. So this is saying, hey, look, is this photo also Tina? How does it know this? Well, I can double click on the face and it's going to take me to that photo. See, this says Tina with a question mark because we only confirmed it was Tina and Ashley in this photo. Remember, we created those tags. But Lightroom's smart enough then to say, hey, that face is pretty similar. And hey, that face is pretty similar. Is that Tina? And I can say, you got it. That's Tina. That's Ashley. And then if we go back over to our faces, now Tina has two and Ashley is also going to have two photos in her grouping. So Lightroom, the facial recognition stuff is super smart. There's so stinking much you can do with it. And by the way, if you're working in a collection or just in your overall library and you turn on people mode, uh, Lightroom is automatically going to start doing this facial recognition processing. So be quick to, on the trigger up here so you can you know pause it because – if you don't want it to be happening, if you want it to happen, great. But if not, it is fairly CPU intensive. It takes a little bit of time and it's going to keep on running. Um, so if you don't want it to do that, you're going to want to make sure you just hit that little down facing arrow and pause the facial recognition until it's ready. See, this is saying, is that Amanda? No, that's not Amanda. That's somebody else. But really, long story short is facial recognition, it's super cool. I mean, there's so much you can do with it. And I, I don't know.
know that this is something I would necessarily use with my clients, uh, but it's definitely something for family photos that's really great. And if you have a machine where you process all your family photos, Lightroom over there, it's all pulling from those hard drives. It's a great way to keep track of family photos, especially if you have a big family. I'm one of eight kids. So to keep track of families and you know, who's married to who and their kids and aunts and uncles and everybody else, it's a great way to go in and just say, hey, I need this uncle and this cousin. Boom, bam, bam. Got all the photos of them just like that. It's so fast. It's so easy. Really, really useful for something like that. So if you've enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the little like button. It just helps uh, Facebook, helps YouTube know that, yeah, this video is something we should share and push up, 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 up. Also, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any other tutorials in the future. And, uh, yeah, for facial recognition in Lightroom, I think that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodsonTutVid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.